somewhere about 40 years ago this coming August, a young man and his wife stepped off the plane coming from the exotic rainforest of Thailand, looked out across the country here, and the husband looked to his wife and said, it appears we've landed somewhere in Arabia. <laughs> Though they came to love and fall in love with not only the area, but the school here, and uh, Petinya, Daidat Thong, and his wife Panjai uh, were graduates of SSOP in uh, 1981. Uh, they became, after graduation, he became a minister in the Midtown Church in Fort Worth, Texas, where they served until 1988. And for the last 30 years, they have been serving in uh, Bangkok, Thailand, uh, in a ministry he calls Thai for the Savior which takes in uh, a variety of things, including campus ministry, uh, leadership institute, a church planning project, church circuit writing, and uh, church growth projects. Out of that work over the last number of years, they've uh, graduated uh, uh, well over 120 students who serve in 31 local congregations across that country and in Laos. And this young, this man will come before you and stand as an example of what this school was intended to do, and that's to reach out and train people to preach the gospel in other parts of the world. And now we have this disciple who has gone making disciples exactly as we all should. So I hope that this morning you will welcome him as we do so very well and say at our very best. Brother, come preach the word. Good morning. First of all, forgive me for not holding the Bible. You know, I have one in here. <laughs> the reason is, I mean, I lost my bag somewhere over Pacific. And um, if you have good one that you can allow me to use for two months, let me know. I don't want to spend $60 to buy one. <laughs> but anyway, I was here. At the airport, it was talking about me. And uh, one year before that, I worked in Saudi Arabia. That's why I mentioned Saudi Arabia to my wife. Anyway, for two years, we learned to love it. She's with, she's with me this morning. Penjai and Puyen, can you stand up, please? Puyen uh, is our youngest daughter. She's an architect in Thailand, and she's a horse rider. She, I have to say this, I hope you understand. She represented Thailand twice uh, to Asian, uh, Southeast Asian Games. I have to say that, forgive me. Anyway, it was a uh, long time ago. Um, I was in the same class with Ron Von Trang and uh, Tim Brownfield. So look at them, and you know how old I am. <laughs> I am young. I'm not sure about them. Forgive me. Anyway, I use Matthew 28, 18 to 20 because it was the first scripture I had to memorize in English. You know, at one. <laughs> he didn't let me do it in Thai, so I had to do it in English, but... If not because of that scripture, you and I will not be here this morning. Really. And uh, I, will, I wouldn't come from Thailand all the way to Arabia here you know, to learn for two years. If not because of that scripture. Parker Henderson wouldn't, uh, probably will not go to Thailand in 1958. And Penjai and I will not be here because he went. But anyway, uh, let me tell you a little bit about ourselves. And uh, we have to do this every time we come, every three years. I hope that I can come back the next time, three years from now. I call it Thai for the Savior. But in Thailand, we cannot put Thai for the Savior above the Church of Christ. 
above the church. And that's, that is the reason we have, you know, Church of Christ on top, tied for the Savior. We're just a group of servants. And I will tell you a little bit about us. And in a way, that's where we are in the world, in Southeast Asia. But this, this is interesting to me, that when we learn that Thai people are not originally from what it is called today Thailand, they said, I don't know, you have to, you know, go, you know, wake up this man who died 20 years ago and ask him why he's, he believed that we, uh, originally came from somewhere in South Pacific and they call, uh, we came out from a group called Austronesian. I don't know what it is. Go search, search for it. But anyway, you have these people called, uh, TAI. Tai, we pronounce Tai. And uh, T-A-I to us is different from T-H-A-I. T-H-A-I is Thailand, the country. Today, 67 million people. But Thai people, T-A-I, you, if you've seen that, that map, you will see uh, those colors, those purple, all the way from northeastern India, in Assam state, we call them Thai Ahom. You know, all the way to southern um, Myanmar today, we, we used to call them Burma. Myanmar today, in a state called Chan, speak the same language I do. In Thailand, 67 million, 7 million people in Laos, and then a whole bunch of them live in Yunnan province, southern China. And you walk all the way, uh, you know, to, uh, travel east to North Vietnam, all the way into a big and big island, uh, that Chiang Kai shek took long, long time ago. He found a group of original people, you try called TAI. I, I'm not sure. I'm not, I cannot say 100% this is what it is, but maybe. That's why they call Taiwan today. T-A-I-W-A-N. I'm not sure. You have to do research on that. But all together, we have almost 100 million people. Uh, the picture is too small, but in the pic, in the, in the middle of the picture, you, you will see a, an area called Nanchao. N-A-N-C-R. C-H-Z-H-A-O. They said it was the first Thai kingdom. Okay. That's our people right there. The first kingdom was called Sukhothai. The second king of this first kingdom named Ram Kamhang. He gave us the, the first Thai alphabet. He did not invent it, I think. He put everything together. <laughs> you know, Khmer, uh, we call them Kom, Mon, or India, or China. Chinese, whatever. That's what we have today. That's why Parker Henderson spent years confusing on how to learn it. Because, you know, not really a, a, a set rule to, for, for Thai language. But anyway, uh, during that time, 800 years ago, Buddhism came to Thailand. Second kingdom, Ayutthaya, our capital was burned down twice by the Burmese. But when you go to Ayutthaya today, you will see a lot of Buddhist temple. Beautiful architect, but false. And the third kingdom is uh, was Thonburi. It lasts only 15 years. I used to say I am 100% Thai. But the, uh, the king who uh, fought against the Burmese that time and restored Siam named King Taksin the Great. Our history said he died. He became insane. Someone killed him. But really the, uh, the, uh, the real story was that he moved down to the south and disappeared. And disappeared. The recent history that they found Link my family to him. 
I am the seventh generation after him. He was half Chinese, so I was proud to be real Thai. No, not anymore. Anyway, fourth kingdom is called Latana Kosin. Started about uh, 220 years ago. The city of now 10 million people. Richard Roger chose it to be one of his. Uh, anybody remember that, the name of the project? Gateway cities, 10 of them in the world. He chose Bangkok. And uh, we worked together for a while. We started congregation in Bangkok. This is Bangkok. You probably say, Look at that Bangkok. Is it Bangkok? Is it not Los Angeles or New York? Bangkok. Bangkok is Thailand. Thailand is Bangkok. When you get out from Bangkok, nothing like that. And uh, when you go to the south, beautiful south, beaches. When you go to the north, peaceful. I said, a lot of people don't believe it. But anyway, we need Savior. We need Savior. 67 million people need Savior. Look at that, num- those numbers. 95% Buddhist. But I have to say, I have to tell you this morning, if Buddha uh, came back to life, he will cry. Because this is the kind of Buddha he invented. Buddhist, something else. Five percent Muslim. Mm-mm. That's small. Yeah, the number is small, but they're really something. All churches, Catholic, Baptist, Church of Christ, Seventh Day Adventist, all together is less than one percent. They all need savior. In the morning, when you wake up at five in the morning, go anyway in Thailand, you will see men in the red or yellow robes line up with a big pot right in front of him. And each monk cannot look, you know, further than three steps ahead of him. Because Buddha does want them to be tempted. Just don't look. That is completely different from what Our Jesus said, isn't it? Our Jesus said, you're not of the world, but you're in the world. Go. And and I like that old English, uh, go ye. When it first came in 1975, I didn't know what ye means. And uh, I thought, okay, ye, this is a a small uh, town in Burma today called ye. Okay, go to Yi. And I don't know whether it has anything to do with the first four families from Birmingham, England arrived in in Siam back then. Yi was in Siam back then. From Birmingham, England. They all medical ma- uh, medical doctors. Started the work there, learned the language there, and one family moved inland, moved into central Siam, central Thailand today. But anyway, um, go ye. At five in the morning, you will see them line up and walk and ask for food. And if you really listen, they will chant so the next monk behind him will will hear it and I ask why they said this will help us concentrate on walking mass church buildings Parker came in 1958 The time he went to Thailand, before last time, he gave me a piece of paper. 
it is a piece of paper said something like the Church of Christ Amanac, something like that. Date 1934. 1934. And that piece of paper contained information about the original first group from Birmingham, England. From 1902 till uh, 1934, 32 years, they established churches, they established uh, nursing college, oh, medical doctors, they uh, established Christian university. In that part of Thailand already, but when you go trying to look, I walk in, they, they all also started uh, a big hospital. When I walk in and I went to the administrative office, told them who I am, what I'm looking for, they sent the men to follow everywhere, make sure this man from Church of Christ will not ask anything about why this hospital belongs to Presbyterian today. Christian University, now that university belonged to Presbyterian Church. Everything that was from the first group of people from Birmingham, England. A lot of stories. Second group came during the 30s, concentrated their work among the Kamu, you tribe people in northern Siam, you know, all the way into Siam, part of Luang Prabang, if you know Luang Prabang in Laos, was part of Siam. I found Kamu groups. I went there in, uh, in February and March. And the last time I went, I, I've been there many times. I found group of Kamu people still singing without instrumental music today. And I wonder, maybe you can help me be a part of that wandering. <laughs> Who taught them that? No instrumental music. Anyway, the third wave, Parker Henderson came, and uh, in Thailand, now 3,000 of us call Parker father. Not heavenly father, but a man we love dearly. Thai for the Savior, like Randy said, we went back to Thailand in 1988. All these work started a group of young people at the university. They went on the street. The bottom picture, one of the young girls from from uh, we, we call Bangkok Servant Leadership Institute summer program, pass out trap. I couldn't do it. But the young people can do it. And the young Muslim accept it. They accept it. This is our Bible school. It's not like this. But um, Truth, Brother Truth, and, and I, we signed a contract. I don't know, 2,000 years ago, maybe. <laughs> we need to renew that. You know, we, we, got a, we got a lot of advices from CB on the curriculums. And, you know, you, you send Edward, you send people to, to visit us and, and and taught in our classes. But I got a dream when I was working in uh, Fort Worth. This was the original uh, first class of Thai Lao School of Preaching in Fort Worth. Started in 1985. It worked so well. At least half of those men in the, in the picture still preaching to the Laotian churches in America. And some of them... now. Most of them retire. Some of them start to go back with the gospel to their own country. They came because of the war. But they went back now with the gospel. Part of the graduates. We planted church. I like a uh, client talk to me one time about Asked me about, Petunia, what are you going to be doing in Thailand? I said, start a church. We started 13 churches in Thailand, Laos. 
no money, no full-time preacher. The door opened, we step in. We, we started radio work. Someone brought us. We went to visit, baptize him, and the church started. So we, we take every opportunity as a Thai who live in Thailand to spread the kingdom. The churches we help start. You know how much we pay for this church building monthly right now? Twenty dollars. We turn that old room uh, house into church with twenty people today. We got it so cheap because it was the haunted house. No one want to buy. No one want to pay. No, no one want to leave. So I'm looking for more. Churches in Laos started. We baptized in the biggest baptistry in the world, built by our Creator. Those are the churches we work with today. We travel every weekend with our Bible students. Anyway, I'm going to stop right there. I'd like to read this to to to. To close it, um, Titus 2, 11 to 14. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires, and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people of his own possession, zealous for good deeds. I really like this scripture. Really like it. It tells at least, number one to me, the Buddhists do not have. Buddha never taught. Grace. Grace. Not karma. Not reincarnation, but the grace of God. Buddhists need to hear that. The second thing I really like about this scripture is, um, let me scroll down. <laughs> Sorry. Christ. Not Patinya. Not Petinia with the Gilligan spirit. You, do you remember the movie, TV show, Gilligan's Island? Anything he got into trouble, he always said, or oh, they always blame him about everything. And he's, he always said, we. And they asked him, who are that we of you? And he always said, me, I, myself. I like that. I remember. That me, I, myself is real. And it is the problem keeping pe people in this world, the sinners, the lost, from coming to our Jesus who can provide salvation through grace. That me, I, myself spirit is really big teaching of Buddha. And also, the last thing I really like is the cross. The cross. I don't know what Klein Payton thought when he started this great work. And all those great people who gave themselves to, to do great work, to reach out to the lost. I don't know why Truth gave up everything and became the king of this small group for a while. I mean, we, we, what I'm trying to say is each of us could choose to do something else for that me, for that I, for that myself. But you all gave up um, because someone died on the cross for us. And that's why I'm here. I am keep coming back. I do not. Forget my SSOP. Now they change it to 
S I B I. That's that's fine, no problem. <laughs> and uh, you, I'm come, I'm going to meet with some of you, asking you to come work with us. But in the same time, I want to be here to to say, keep doing what you're doing. I'm here to encourage you. In the same time, I appreciate you. I want to encourage you to keep doing for the for the world. Add more flags. God bless you. <laughs>